no one still agrees on anything star trek <laughs> today on trekland tuesdays live with me dr trek larry nimichek coming at you from the heart of trekland through portal 47 and trekland treks for some sanity clarity and a bigger picture on all things star trek hope everyone is doing well this live tuesday bright and shiny here in my new digs it's funny we've had so much news this last week and everybody has weighed in news coming from thick and far i mean it's not just the fact that we've got a fresh track going although some would dispute that obviously apparently still we've got actual trek episodes going we've had news headlines they've been dropping almost once a day in fact it feels like and it's almost like the waters had been stilled for a while and now that's stirred everything up and i don't know if it's exactly stirred up the mud but it's clouded the water as it does when you you know throw a rock in or when you walk through a, a stream and you kick up the rocks and the dirt that had been dead anyway it's funny how some of these old sentiments or sediments did you see what i did there <laughs> have been just laying dormant and we somewhere between yeah four months of dormant trek and uh, the first couple of weeks but anyway it was it's amazing to me now look everybody has their own opinion as long as you're an actual organic human being or vulcan or whatever it's fine if you're a bot or a troll get out of here if you're being paid to do this or if you're some psychopath but i'm talking about people's sincere heartfelt opinions about things yeah and we are so far thank god from the toxic tuber days when streaming and returned to trek and even we didn't understand how the algorithms worked we have learned so much in these last seven years about not just star trek and the way the sausage is made these days <laughs> or do we know that much about it on the corporate side but we understand how the interwebs are going right and we've been through it's been an interesting journey these last few years now everybody and their and their grandma has done a documentary about the dangers of algorithms and trending negative and now we're into ai and how you turn an ai loose on the open web for a day and it's already getting suicidal and depressed <laughs> so we know those things and yet I didn't realize we would have such a drumbeat or such a stack of, of Trek headlines this past week, but at every turn, it stirred up some feelings from folks, even as things had felt like they were starting to settle down. Now, here's what I mean. I mean, first, the completely innocuous, and I even kid about it, off the radar, about what's happening with the new movies, with Paramount. And so much stuff has been in chaos because of the remarriage, the remerger, <laughs> the reconciliation and now what does that look like but now the couple is about to be bought out of their home and they're going to have to figure out where they're you know are some of the kids going to have to live somewhere else when they get bought out of their home or are they really going to sell after all i'm talking about paramount global and its dance with all these partners who it may or may not sell to sky dance among them and just seeing how the the business community is weighing in on that and hearing about how three members of the board from Paramount resigned. I'm not happy with the Ellison deal. And I've seen even not conspiracy stories, but deep, dark meta moves going on with that. I would have liked to have researched it more, but I'm not an MBA. <laughs> it's Masters of Business Administration. I had to tell someone the other day what that meant. I don't have one or know the content, but I, I, I know the acronym. I'm good with acronyms. It's really a complex buyout, both of Paramount and National Amusements, and that seems to be what they're looking at, but also the Apollo, which seemed to be the most disinterested. Anyway, I'm not going to get in the weeds of that. We've talked about a little. You can go dig in and find out what's going on about that. But it's not surprising that there's all kinds of people weighing in on that, people that seem to do know a little bit about business and talking about what's good and bad. And here where I had thought that the Skydance deal was going to be the best yet, I've read at least one story, thank you, Puck, where it gets into the weeds about Machiavellian moves going on and who it would really be. So, you know, whatever. We're just worried about what happens to Star Trek. I know, I know. So that's been out there for a ways. We've, we've been watching those come and go, but it's gotten a little pointed, a little heated now that they've carved out 30 days to have some kind of exclusive negotiating period with Skydance. We'll keep our eye on that. But the opinions are now starting to roll in after the headlines, and they're all over the place. But closer to home here, here's Disco. 
on an improved <laughs> on an improved you know with two or three episodes that i see people happier about i've actually seen people as i wondered say well gosh i wish it had been like this two or three years ago i see people with the opinion of well it's still a little muddled it's just a little less so and that's true and then lo and behold bless their little hearts we've got the kurtzman haters out there still <laughs> we've got the secret hideout folks who who somehow they never got the memo that there have been what four series out three live actions two animators they're all over the place but they're nope they're all they're all still in that big box no differentiation in tone much less media apparently and it's just it's almost been nostalgic to see them kind of come out of the woodwork and i get it you know i again everybody's entitled to their opinion if they're civil that's fine but i just wonder if there's people that go through their lives and they just look for a little fleck and they're not being paid to do it they're not trolling and they're not bots they just it's like that's their whole identity in life <laughs> and, they, and i don't know probably something else is not well with them probably something else in their life is troubling and it gives them joy to jump on and tell people once again how they don't think this is you know the old trite phrases this is real track or i mean it, it, we've heard it and seen it and dragged ourselves through it in far worse times and you know what i don't every star trek that's out today everything from the modern era is not my favorite i have my favorites i have lesser favorites but i know that if this is going to be a franchise you have your good days you have your bad days you have your good weeks you have your bad weeks <laughs> You have your good years, you have your not so great years, and you have your great series and you have your not so great series. But once a series becomes a series and goes through episodes, it evolves and goes through phases just like any life does. So it's, you know, it's funny. I have been rooting for Discovery this year. Someone on my YouTube went back to the old, you're just a cheerleader. And I'm like, really? Really? You, you're not picking up my sarcasm here, but that tells me about them that apparently nuance is lost and I'm not judging and gatekeeping. I'm just trying to make sense of things. Right? So that's not real surprising that a lot of people didn't. What's amazing to me is I started off not happy with the first episode. I thought it was too actiony. I appreciated the second one as a rare second episode under the twin moons, a rare exercise in discovery taking a moment and not only having character scenes but calling back its own canon taking a moment to remember things from season one and two and almost like they're gonna like make everything smooth out in the end and fit and feel consistent and if not consistent at least remembered everything doesn't have to be about the crisis of the moment when those still waters <laughs> can run deep for a moment and then the third episode, before I saw it, I started seeing the uh, reviews coming in talking about how it was just a muddled mush and too many subplots. And I enjoyed it. In fact, I've seen some people talk about it being their favorite episode of the season. So even among the people who are enjoying Discovery, there's differences of opinion about the first three episodes. What a concept. Hmm. I believe, I believe I first saw this phenomenon back when i was a kid in high school <laughs> talking about the original series so again the long view is going to serve us well and i have said for years that in the crisis of the moment the controversy of the week that's one thing or even even the fall off your chair praise i mean i love the fact that picard season three was such a different breath of fresh air just reading the fan press every week the fan media every week the reviewers and the fans the comment threads but just like with the the darkest days of discovery i said i wonder what our perspective is going to be in five years in 10 years and not that that makes what we think in the moment it, it i'm not negating that but i'm just saying you know that we look at everything we don't only really look at everything differently as the years pass. Our perspective shifts, the old pendulum swing on the original series, on Next Generation, certainly on DS9, and Voyager, and Enterprise. Anyway, it was slightly amusing. And then we get, wow, out of the blue, on a Friday, Friday news dump, it feels like, people reacting to the Discovery episode. 
right? 503. Uh, Janiel. <laughs> Jamil, Janazel, Haas and Fepik. No, no, no. And then comes the news about Strange New Worlds being renewed for a fourth season and Lower Decks being ended with five seasons. I love how if you, the old school days were like with the original series, you have finished a season, finished a season, and then everybody stood around to see if you got renewed or not. Or if you were on the bubble, you were done and then saw, and then they called you back to work on this is very cagey what they do now. Now they renew you say for four years, and as you're working on the fourth, before people even see the fourth season, they say, okay, well, this is going to be the last or the fifth season. Working on the fifth season of Lower Decks. And before you even see the fifth season, before it's even widely promoted by the promotion machine, that's the key. Now you know it's the last. And just like as was done with Discovery, Hey, it's your final season. Take a victory lap, kids. Grab the flag. Run around the stadium. We'll all cheer for you as you head out the door, as you as you sink slowly in the, in the sunset. Very cagey. You, you, you don't wait for people to be really hyper-emotional and on the bubble waiting, asking the questions. You do it before we even get to that stage. And now everyone knows except the people trying to wrap it up, maybe. Discovery got an extra couple of weeks to shoot a little epilogue final chapter scene at the end when they got the news. Surprise, shocked. Hadn't planned on it. Is that going to happen with Lower Decks? Of course, the difference with Lower Decks, that closing comment that we read last week, or I read on a, I did a live this week, if you didn't catch it, on Friday. I couldn't stand to wait till today. I had to say something because I saw everything go up in an uproar about the cancellation of lower decks which it is but we've we've changed in the euphemism of not, it's not canceling lower decks for a sixth season it's preparing for the final season of of lower decks <laughs> the final the finale of it's like oh we didn't know it was a finale when we sat down to plan it the other thing and and of course that that rendered up so many emotions and yeah a lot of people came out of the word talking about how no Lower Decks was my favorite Trek. Lower Decks was the purest Trek out there. And then yet I still had folks say, it's a sitcom just as well. It's not. I would have liked Lower Decks if they hadn't made it canon. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding? The, the Orions, the Ferengi, I well, you've heard me. If you haven't caught my second opinions, please do, right in the middle of doing Discovery as it drops each week. But I got into this as the Lower Decks season wound up and we went to orion not once but twice thank you tendy nothing like having a regular character representing a, a culture looking at you cork and fringies looking at you wharf and klingons looking at you tendy and orions now when will we get that tellerite character looking at you shran semi-regular and andorians still still the folks out there that say they can't hack lord now it makes me wonder if people ever watched more than the first two or three episodes because the first one was a little wobbly. But I also remember thinking that Lower Decks had the tightest first season of any Star Trek ever. We'll see what happens with the new boys coming down the line here. It's amazing. Again, what headlines and the emotions they stir up, what that brings back out of the woodwork again. The other thing that was interesting is, and of course, the, the weird thing was it was happy news for Strange New Worlds. We kind of thought that. It's it's getting, it's once again, it's nominated for Hugos. Two episodes are nominated for Hugos. The two, the two stunt shows, right? <laughs> Subspace Rhapsody and those old scientists, congratulations, are are competing against a very tight field, against each other and a tight field. So we'll see what the Hugos are, which is voted every year by the members of Worldcon which may only be two, three, four thousand people voting among all the other Hugos, right? Strange New Worlds, which should be celebrating and did by the mid part of the day, the likes of no less than Anson Mount were saying, hey, we were cheering and celebrating our renewal, but that in no way takes away our appreciation and, and sadness, bittersweet for the fate of Lordex.
And look, they just had the crossover. They just worked together to a certain extent. So it was it was bittersweet. It's amazing. It's on one hand, it's not standard playbook. They released the good news and the bad news in one day. So the bad news didn't soak up the whole spotlight and just run a negative spiral down. At the same time, <laughs> the negativity or the or the de depressive nature, the dark side of, of a cancellation notice kind of dimmed out a little bit for Strange New Worlds. Unless you were so siloed off in your SNW goodness chamber that the lower decks didn't touch you. But for, I think for most fans, it was a mixed bag. It was a bittersweet day. So yay on the corporate promotional strategy. You get it. But it was it was interesting to watch a lot of people, and of course, what's good news, bad news? You know what is it? If it bleeds, it leads. It's like it's not a fifty fifty. Even when you do that, people say, "Well, it's the well, Strange New Worlds got renewed, but Lower Decks is gone." Oh, we're pissed about that. And you give you give a nod to the renewal, and then you're off and running. So it's not really a fifty fifty. Corporate strategies need to be re-examined. Of course, I don't know. I don't know how you sugarcoat bad news, especially in this case, especially when people felt like Lower Decks was just getting revved up. And we haven't seen the fifth season. And of course, the sting will be another few months away. It'll probably start up in late summer, just after a little bit around Vegas con time into August, September, October will probably be the runtime for that. And we have all the things. The again, though. The interesting thing here was the statement, the publicly stated, corporately approved comment, duly signed by Alex and by Mike McMahon, about, we hope these will not be the last of the adventures of Mariner and Boimler and Tendi and Rutherford. So that's pretty strong. That's pretty strong messaging. I know from my sources that they had suspected maybe but they, they from the top down, Mike on down to the actors, the crew, everybody, and they reacted this way on socials, but they did not have word for sure until the corporate word came down on the, on the Paramount channels. So I think they'd been braced for a while, but there you go. At the same time, apparently there are plans afoot. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean like Prodigy, they go to Netflix? Well, part of the announcement was, don't worry. You can watch Lower Dex's prior adventures right here on Paramount+. Plus. Which, on one hand, if you do, let's just say that Netflix goes for a double and they pick up a new season of Lower Dex. Let's just say, supposing. What does that do? do? Does that entail an agreement that lower that Netflix wants to be the home of Lower Decks, and they insist on it leaving Paramount Plus, or is that a that is that a not a deal breaker? Can they still run the reruns? I, it feels weird calling streaming reruns. Can they show the original years on Paramount Plus, and then does Netflix get to show them also, so they're not exclusive to Paramount Plus? Or do they have to be exclusive to Netflix? What is it one or the other, or can they go both? Or wherever, Hulu, wherever the hell it winds up, if it does that. Or does that preclude going to another home? And we're talking about some of these famous small screen TV movies, of which Section 31, the backdoor pilot, is going to be one. Would an animated small movie, I mean, Heaven forbid an animated cinema movie would be awesome. And you hear that. I don't know. It's been a whole 18 months ago strategizing, but we heard head of features at Paramount talking about while they wrangle around a live action movie, maybe animation takes the cake first. And what's amazing is the one that was mentioned then was Prodigy, which there's still an ownership stake in Prodigy. It's not a, a movie wouldn't be totally Netflix's domain. I'm assuming was that spelled out in the contract that for distribution on Netflix, that any prodigy movie was fair game and didn't have to be on Netflix and could be cinema, or does it have to go through Netflix, but could very well be a cinema as Netflix has done theater, 
theater running films, famously. So we have all kinds of interesting yeehaw going on here. Hopefully it's not the last peep from the Cerritos crew, Cerritos Strong. And then, <laughs> speaking of widescreen movies, we had the announcement actually earlier in the week about the had been announced, but we get the little the little bump headline, the little hiccup headline that the origin movie that's not strictly not a Kelvin movie. It's an origin movie, which the Paramount Pictures theater side promotion folks insist on saying takes place decades, decades before Star Trek 09 because that's the only reference point they have because they were told not to reference anything else in the franchise. That's the only thing they know to say. I mean, it's been 12 years, 13, 14 years, 15 years <laughs> since that premiered. And the, the tizzy that threw people into, because if you want to be strict about it, the Calvin universe started in 2233 at the birth of Kirk. And that was only 20 years before. So decades is literally two or more. So if it happened before 2233, it would just be a prime movie and they didn't want to say that. And a lot of people are hoping that the origin movie, origin of what? Would be maybe finally, finally the Romulan War and the founding of the Federation and the merging of the planets, cultures and governments and 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 space fleets into one unifying arm, you know, like the merging of the 13 colonies. You had the con the coalition of planets always reminded me of the articles of confederation and it didn't work out and then they decided something stronger was needed so the federation tada was formed with more of a merged culture and defense force it's it parallels a lot the us's early history except with the us the war of independence came first and then they had they went through the motions of trying governments in Star Trek's case, the coalition of planets happened first, then the Romulan War, then the need for defense was seen, and then the merging that became a tighter unit that became the Federation for mutual defense in the beginning. It would be awesome to see that, I always thought. I always thought that's what one thing, that that's one thing that all of fandom agreed on, and how it was so unfair that Enterprise got cut short because that's where Enterprise could have led into, even though we had a couple of nods to the future in the finale. It's not the same thing. And most of all, we don't have, we have excellent book series. We've had things in comics. We've had nonfiction material. There is no definitive history for that period. The heroic war, what was the strategy of the battles and all that? Even though I followed Dave Goodman's from the Federation 150 when we updated stellar cartography and I did battle maps. I went with his because it was the same publisher. People said, why didn't you use the pocketbooks version? I'm like, I, I went with, I did what I thought I should do and go in-house and more modern. But that's exactly what I'm talking about. We need a definitive version past the three or four crumbs that we know. And lo and behold, back with this week's theme, I saw somebody jump in with the old, what the hell do we need with an origin movie? Not only was it, why go backwards? I'm so tired of that. It's all in the future. <laughs> but also, what's the point? We had Enterprise. We've already had an origin story. Excuse me? <laughs> so if you are really a, 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 a fan of, say, Abraham Lincoln, and there was a movie about young Abraham Lincoln as a teenager, you wouldn't want to go back and see his parents getting together and having, I mean, there is so much origin we don't know yet, but some of the, some of them, I almost said something, some of these fans, and I can tell they're organic. I actually had someone go on for a long paragraph about what's with this origin movie. We've had the origin. My God, move forward. I don't want to see another Pri I don't want to see another Kelvin movie. We had Enterprise. What's the point? I just like, I'm sorry, are we watching the same franchise? 
and basically you get back into that mood about stop going backwards. Let's get on with the, I go, well, what, at what point are you going to go forward? You're going to go forward from the 23rd century. You're going to go forward from the 24th century. Are you going to go forward from the 32nd century? And oh my gosh, if someone is of the mind to say, we've had enough origin, we had enterprise, let's go forward. Something tells me they are not the kind of fan to say, oh yes, the 32nd century, let's go forward from there. Something tells me that anyone who is poo-pooing on a Romulan war movie as being going backward, they want to go forward. Their idea of going forward is not going forward. <laughs> From uh, Professor Tilly and the Starfleet Academy kids, and that's me guessing. Their their thing going forward is not from the Navarre drama, which I laugh, I laugh, I laugh. So you know their idea is go back to what I'm what I want to do, and and Prodigy and Lower Decks are doing that beautifully, especially right now. Lower Decks is getting to kind of wallow around in that era, and they might even be the kind of person that says, "Oh, Lower Decks, they had to go and make it canon. It's just too sitcommy for me." Again, those people I question if they've watched anything past the first three episodes of Lower Decks. But there you go. The guy basically on YouTube commenting about this, going on and on about how silly it was to try to fill in gaps. And when you talk about that, don't you dare take away my childhood. <laughs> it's like, what made me a Trek fan in the first place? Oh my God, all that missing stuff. Well, don't stop here. There's more than one damn ship in this universe. Can we get off this ship and go see other stuff? <laughs> That's why I love Journey to Babel. Journey to Babel, the one time in the original series, you got to go see something else. You got a hint of what else was out there. Until the movies. Uh, that's why the movies were such a revelation. Even motion picture. So, yes. I guess it's reassuring. I guess it's reassuring to know that Star Trek fandom hasn't gone dormant. Heaven forbid. I guess it's interesting to see that even with the vast evolution that this fandom has had in its, in its attitude, its awareness. And sometimes, you know, it's a, it, there's an old phrase. You, it's hard to know. It's hard to know what you don't know. And I can stand here all day long and say, well, what would you like to see me do on my show? What would you like me to offer in portal 47? What, you know, people do that. We used to, talk about that with communicator what would you like us to do in communicator oh nothing it's perfect just the way it is it's like people people don't know what they don't know and we have had such an educational ride people were wary about serialized storytelling and i don't blame them it's been a rough road but we've started to see in all the series ways to improve how to block that out what that would look like with star trek We've gone through the whole, oh my God, you can't, you can't match visual canon because that would, this is a 20, 27, 18, 19, 20 audience, not a 1966 or a 1987. Audience. Been through all of that. That's specious and facetious. We can't watch a, not a Star Trek cartoon. Oh no, not that. Not a comedy. Not a musical. Basically, guys, gals, peeps, any idea is going to be great. Just about any idea is going to be great. Now, how you execute it, whether it's a one-off movie or a full-blown series or a mini-series or a short trek or a very short trek. You know, if I used to love the old, right, the old phrase, if you build it, they will come. I always want to say, you know, if you build it well, they will come. Otherwise, if you build it, they will come once, maybe. <laughs> and then you may never see them again. And that's true of anything. And that's as it should be. You should have the feedback. And people, you know, vote with their feet. They vote with their dollars. They vote with their attention and their love and their emotion. They vote with their come comebackedness. Are they returning? Are they returning champions or not? And we know, we know what has, in the moment, we know how each of the series has been received. We know how it's already revolved or evolved. We know how it feels like it's revolving. I'm dizzy. Are you? 
what we don't know is how we will perceive all of these series five and ten years from now, which of course is life. That's politics, that's sports, that's religion, that's whatever part of the culture we're talking about. I mean, the cynical side of me says that art and design and cars and fashion all change or else the industries would go broke. Graphics and art styles have to change so we can date images to the decade that it came from, right? 20s letters, 50s letters, 70s letters. I mean, roaring 20s letters, by the way. So again, we're, we're in this great material continuum. I've been thinking about Ferengis lately. But that river had kind of stilled a little lately. And if nothing else, this you know varied series of headlines coming from all over, coming from all different directions of the Trek world, stirred a lot of that up the way it hadn't been done in months. Not to an ugly degree, not to a hateful, uncivil degree, but to me anyway, on my radar scope, seeing some of these old opinions pop up again, I know a lot of people that had various opinions over the years have been persuaded, have been swung, or else their criticisms may have been answered or assuaged. I just love that word, assuaged. Oh, it's just like petting a ruffled feather a ruffled fur cat or a dog that's got its hair you know soothing something it's a lot of things have been answered talked to discussed there are some folks who that just refuse to see it because they made their first opinion first impression and they will die with that first impression but a lot of fans you know maybe take a, a decade or two people that took a decade or two or three to come back around to ds9 or even voyager and even Enterprise, as, as, as Doug said during that short-lived season five Enterprise campaign, there are fans today that don't even know they're supposed to hate the show. Oh, yeah, perspective is amazing. But, you know, whatever, whatever it is, we are all one big happy fandom. And thankfully, we're not all poured out of the same mold. And as long as things don't, you know, become lead to harassment, physical abuse, physical or online stalking, those are obviously out of the main, but we can, we can do so much and be way short of that. Those are extremes. People can vouch the old fight. You know, you used to go to club meetings. You used to sit around and con room parties at two in the morning. People used to have, when it was face to face, everything was okay. And if something really got out of line, you could get up and leave. You could throw your drink in their face. <laughs> you could do something. But how often did things get that out of control when it was live to live and we could still see each other eye to eye? The promise of all this internet discussion, and this is hardly a new topic, but you know, it's just opened the door for that kind of thing to happen. And for some people who are not socially adept, that still transfers into their online presence. And they the same things that they would never do live to live. I don't say it as a hate thing. I'm saying just as where their comfort zone is. Maybe they're somewhere on that old. It's a, it's such a trite thing to say, but they're on the spectrum and things they'd never get into face to face. They find themselves involved in an online discussion or forum or whatever, one on one back and forth threading and things get out of control in a weird way. And maybe they feel bad about it later or maybe they don't just saying it's all in the realm of possibilities. And it's been interesting. I didn't think about it in the moment, but it just it's just like these headlines just kept stacking up during the week on top of the new episode of Discovery. And I was just taking note of what I saw in the threads. What about you? I never talk about Star Trek Explorer magazine. I have been a part of the roots of this magazine from Titan back when it was the British only magazine when we were still we still had the license for communicator here when Decipher then had the license and then Decipher went all but bust and Paramount let Titan come over and apply as the US licensee so it's now the official license for the English speaking world. And I have had my lost, I've had uh, the fistful of data column in here since then, and occasional stories. 
and the new magazine is out. And since they rebranded with the Explorer title, this is issue 11. It's bi-monthly, basically. They've added short fiction. And short fiction, which runs through the, the same grinder that all the pocket novels do. So someone at, at the studio reads the stories. Uh, they have to be edited and vetted and all that. And you'll recognize the authors of a lot of them. So on top of all the nonfiction articles and interviews and columns, uh, there's short fiction in it. So for all of you people who somehow like fiction in your Star Trek, <laughs> narrative literature fiction, um, that's a big part of the magazine these days. If you have not sampled in the last year or two with the big reboot. Um, yes, so there's, you know, it's all the stuff. And I think they do alternate covers too. But this is uh, the latest. I mean, you can see what's... There's, uh, uh, yes, and the, there's Picard here. There's uh, the Hagemans here for Prodigy. There's Picard, New Fiction, for guys, Interview of Sinequa, Teasing the Season, Time Travel, and, of course, the Trechnology. Trechnology is a word, by the way, that Terry Hiller created in the 80s. I just want to say that was the name of the column in The Communicator all through the nineties and the aughts. So I wish, wish there'd been, a, I wish things like that didn't just get overlooked and ignored. Anyway, pick it up on your newsstand, subscribe. There's also a digital PDF version. It's not your dad's old <laughs> Star Trek magazine. There's something in it for everybody. I can't, let's, let's, let's chill there. And let's just absorb all that. Because again, I had such a, such a collection. It's almost got, it almost got quaint. It was like, oh, there's one of them. Oh, look, I haven't heard from one of those in a long time. Oh, that guy, her, her thing. I haven't heard that in so long. Gosh, they're still out there. I mean, is that, is that, and is that not being harassed privilege <laughs> that you can look at things as like little sociological objects and not in your face? I don't know. I need to remind everybody that it is beautiful weather going on now and we're getting into the spring and summer years. And if you're thinking about travel and it's coming West, don't forget Trekland Treks is out here for you. We will do your customize away mission. Do it in advance. I've had people lately get me on a week's notice and I've made them work until we got rained out for one, but it's always better if we have a little breathing room when you plan your trip to West coast. Business or pleasure, treklandtreks.com. You can check it out, or like everything else, it's at my site, larrynemichek.com. But that means I also got to thank all of our Patreons. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Diana Hopkins, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, Joshua Patton, Justin Porteous, Glenda Bruton, Chris Jiggins, Pranakasha Productions, Comedy Forecast, and Andrew Jasimski, and our live wires. Robert McLean, Byron Bailey, J.R. Poole, Javier Gunyanson, Alan Hoenzi, Dave Gregory, Tobias Rex, Don S. Runyon, Greg Wickstrom, and Casey Shafsky. Yes, indeed. I want to thank all of them for, for being supportive. Again, I keep it, everything small on a small scale here. Patreon.com slash Trekland Live. It supports all of our growing network and we have been growing the last couple of years i've got one or two at least another couple of guests lined up here for the next couple of months we'll see how the details are going to coming going to be coming but i want to thank everybody for doing the patreon uh i again i kept it simple on purpose just so a lot of more people could hopefully jump in and do that if you want to support what we do here at trekland and you want to be part of it in a more active way well then you want to check out portal47.net what you also want to check out is, can you believe it? It's our season 11 finale. There you are. Our season, our 11th season. There, there are 24 shows a piece, so you do the math. Figure it in your years. And fitting of a season finale, we have the great, the great Walter Koenig as our finale guest. And we're looking at his pitch to the animated series, kind of a way to tap off the 50th anniversary year, which you know started last fall. We thought we'd come full circle with honoring the 50th anniversary of the original animated series on NBC Saturday morning and talk about Walter's pitch. It changed. 
it's interesting to read his pitch through the through the eyes and ears and writings of Dorothy Fontana. Wonderful, wonderful time. We talked about even more than that. Slightly longer edition befitting our guest. But you want to catch that. It's up on the Trek Files, wherever fine podcasts are catch. If you want to get the document, and of course you do, like every week, you got to catch it at podcast.roddenberry.com or our Facebook page. Very, very proud of that. We had such a great time with Walter. I'm going to have to have him back. Why did it take so long? I don't know. Meanwhile, why did it take me so long to get to the socials? At Larry Nimichuk on Twitter X. <laughs> yes, I'm still there. We'll see what happens. 13,000 people can't be wrong, right? Instagram's great, Larry's Trekland, as is YouTube, where you are right now. Hopefully, please like and subscribe. Do a super chat and we get to the chat. And Facebook, too. Right? And Portal47.net, as I explained. Gang, thank you so much. If you're watching us later, that's it for this week. But you should try to watch us live sometime at 1-ish Pacific, 4-ish Eastern. On all these Trekland channels where you're watching right now. And I will just say to you folks, stay healthy. Do all the things. Stay woke. Check your sources. And trek well. <laughs>